<laughs> we are live on Facebook. Good day, Hi. everyone. <laughs> I have with me today um, Juliet first from the United States of America. And you're welcome to the series, My Child Has Down Syndrome. So what? Today we're gonna to be unpacking a lot of things, um, you know, um, regarding Down syndrome, and I'm so excited to have Juliet today on board. She is an amazing lady, a sister to Evangeline, and um, we are gonna be talking about a project, T21 project today. But before I begin, I wanna talk about, I'm gonna just give you a a little bio, I mean, a brief bio about Juliet. Hi, Juliet. Welcome to the show today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So Juliet first is the, is the photographer behind the T21 project, a photographic project celebrating the abilities of people with Down syndrome, inspired by a younger sister, Evangeline. T21 or trisomy 21 is the most, um, sorry, is the most common form of Down syndrome. Julia through the T21 project has featured participants from the United States, Romania and Germany, and has plans to add more countries to this list. Our goal is to spread awareness of all of the unique and amazing things that these children and adults can do no matter where they come from and no matter the level of ability. The T21 project loudly affirms that all people with Down syndrome and amazing. And to add, let me add also that um, Juliet is a safe Down syndrome ambassador. I just got to know like this very minute. So whoo, have the shirt on. Yeah, I should have been wearing my <laughs> my I own told you. I'm Sorry. Okay. So I'm so glad to have you here today, Juliet. Thank you. You know, we're talking about you know you having you online come you know come out to talk to people, talk about um your project, talk about your journey, mm -hmm. and having a sister with Down syndrome, you know and you know, how everything has been. So quickly, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Just introduce yourself by yourself. Yes, um, so I'm Juliet. Uh, I'm from North Carolina, which is on the East Coast of the United States. And I'm 25 and my little sister Evangeline is 20 and we have an older sister named Paris. Um, so basically I've grown up with Evangeline in my life. Um, really just as my best friend and she truly is the person that I'm closest to and I hate to pick favorites but she's definitely one of my favorite people on the planet um Aww. so yeah we've been very close since we were little um and now I'm back in Wilmington North Carolina um and get to see her all the time um, so she, she's recently graduated high school and now she's in a transitional program for young adults, um, at the local university here. Um, so that's basically a chance for her to practice vocational skills and, uh, social skills and home training and all kinds of different things, um, to help prepare her for life as an adult. So she's doing amazingly, um, and yeah, basically, I mean, she's the sole inspiration for the project. Um, I, I had a photojournalism class in 2016 uh, in which we were asked to, in, in university, um, in which we were asked to just take photos of anything that we wanted. Um, and I had had in mind a photo project about people with Down syndrome for a while, um, but this was, four years ago and I wasn't as experienced Amazing. with photography yet. So I was kind of a little bit timid at the time. Um, and <laughs> I just decided to give it a shot and reached out to some families and took their portraits of their kids with Down syndrome. Um, and a lot of us are still in contact today and those have been some really sweet friendships. Um, and wow. then I, like two years later decided 
to just go ahead and make a official website uh, with a new name. Um, it had originally just been like a photo blog with some like automatically generated name um, that the blog software came up with. Um, but I decided like, you know, we're gonna have a logo and social media channels and a website and a domain name and it's gonna be a thing like, and yeah. And that's when I think it really took off uh, more officially. That was in early 2019. Um, so yeah, since then we, I've gotten to interview uh, people, like I said, excuse me, uh, in Germany and in Romania, just a little bit, and but mostly primarily in North Carolina. Um, so we're still getting started and we have really big dreams for the project. And I definitely would love to just travel all over and tell stories outside of our North Carolina <laughs> bubble. Um, because Down syndrome is is a worldwide uh, community, the Down syndrome community is. Um, so yeah, I just want to be reflective of all nationalities and languages and cultures and interests. So yeah, that is the goal. This is this is so amazing! Wow, wow, wow! Honestly, all I can say, I can keep saying wow, 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 like forever. <laughs> I can see that you, you know you you kind of did not let the fact that you have a sister with Down syndrome you, you really didn't you didn't let that that gift waste because I see them as a gift I know that a lot of people keep unwrapping them unwrapping them like seriously I know you know what I'm talking about you know yeah they um this untapped talents you know we need we need to keep unwrapping them like they're just a gift to the world, not even to families alone. Yes. And I, I love what you're doing with the T21 project. You've taken you know, it far and above you. And, and I know that you know, reaching out to families, reaching out to more people just makes it look like you're doing a lot of social good. You're reaching out to people so they can, be, so they know they're not, they're not alone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honestly, let me just know, I just wanna know, ask you this. How was the awareness and acceptance of persons with Down syndrome being in the United States of America? Yeah, good question. Um, so every year in the United States, um, about 6,000 babies are born with Down syndrome. So that is one in 700. Um, so that's a pretty significant number. Um, in my day to day, I probably see out in public a person with Down syndrome um, maybe like once a month at least, which of course I always get so excited and I really want to hand them a business card. Sometimes I get <laughs> nervous, but, um, so I know, you know, that experience, um, and just being able to understand exactly what that's like. So wonderful. But, um, yeah, I, I think the perception in the U S is better now, obviously than it has been. Um, you know, as recently as the 1980s, I believe, um, you know, people with disabilities, even like depression, um, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, especially Down syndrome, were institutionalized. Um, and we've come so far since then. Uh, we have the Americans with Disabilities Act, um, you know, workplaces are on their way to becoming more inclusive. Um, but I do think that's the area in which, or one of the areas in which we have the most room to grow um, is within the workplace and basically just in hiring more people with disabilities. So there are some people that were in the project that, uh, the T21 project that tried to um, find a job working as a barista or just part-time at a coffee shop, just, you know, wiping tables or something, which is what my sister does yeah. at a cafe. Um, mm -hmm. And they said, you know, they just got rejection after rejection and people, business owners, you know, just feeling a little bit unsure and maybe not quite ready to take that leap, um, understandably, but, you know, the businesses I've seen utilize 
people with special needs, obviously fairly and with fair pay, um, you know, have benefited tremendously from it. And, you know, there's, I think there's a different atmosphere in the cafe when my sister's working. Um, and I think it really just makes a lot of people's days and makes them want to come back. Um, just because it's so, just so sweet and personable um, and a hard worker too. So yeah, I was just going to say that, you know, Gabby of Gabby's Grounds, she was in the project and, you know, she started this coffee company. Okay. Was, she started this coffee company because she wasn't finding a place to work. Um, I'm sorry, um, I can't tell if we were <laughs> overlapping. Um, but yeah, that's mostly what I was going to say um, is... I guess I think it's also important to note um, that, like, on the whole, it seems like when people encounter people with Down syndrome in public, they're treated kindly. And um, I think, yeah, I mean, it, it's difficult. It's all kind of relative. But I do think in the United States, it is a little bit more advanced than in some other countries, um, based on just some people I've spoken to. Um, but we are still working on changing our language and making our language yeah. more inclusive and respectful. Yeah. So there's a movement called um, Spread the Word to End the Word. And mm -hmm. it's to, yeah, it's, the campaign is against the word retarded. Um, yeah. Which, you know, began as a medical term. And word retarded over there, right? Sorry, what was that? A lot of people do you are you seeing a lot of people use the word retard over there in the US? Primarily as a slur, mm -hmm. um, or just yeah. as an insult, just in the context of joking typically. Um, mm. so but yeah, in our high schools, so for the schools for um, people ages like 14 to 18, uh, there are a lot of buddy programs, like best buddies programs. Um in which these teenagers are paired or they work with people with special needs, um, whether in sports or in maybe in the classroom, I'm not quite sure. My high school didn't have it, um, but yeah, there are a lot of programs and athletic tournaments for people with special needs and Down syndrome. Um, there are celebrities with Down syndrome here, actors, actresses, lobbyists, um, a lot of self-advocates. So I think uh, Instagram has helped with this, social media. Um, so yeah, I would say it's on an upward trend for sure. Yeah, that, that's interesting to know that, you know, there are a lot of celebrities and I know they didn't get there like in a day. I know a lot of people, you know, had to, people in the community were more accepting and, you know, they got a lot of support from the government, from people, from family. And that tells me that the stigma is not as much as it is in Africa. Yeah. yeah. Because we still have the, you know, um, people look at them as, um, you know, there's a word, they, there's a name they call them in Africa. They call them imbeciles. Mm -hmm. You know, people look at them and think um, they, they don't deserve to leave, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I, happy that we're doing this together. And that tells me that um, um, people, different, Down syndrome affects people of different races, culture, um, ethnic groups, and it's okay to have Down syndrome. I mean, it's not a death sentence. So thank you, thank you for shedding more lights on that. So can you, can you, can I ask if um, you are any time, you are, was there any moments that you felt that um, Evan Evangeline, your sister, was stigmatized for having Down syndrome? Was that a time you felt she was um, denied an opportunity, you know, or was she relegated to the background? Was there any time that she was excluded or, you know, stigmatized for having Down syndrome? Hmm. Well, that's tough. Um... You know, a lot of my perspective being a sister is probably 
a little bit incomplete compared to my mom's. Um, she could probably answer that. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I do remember an instance in which um, at our, at one of the churches that we went to, um, like instead of contacting my parents and saying, hey, how can we support your daughter um, as far as like placing her in a Sunday school classroom? Um, mm -hmm. So she had been in a classroom with the typically developing peers in her same age group. Um, yeah. So that was inclusive. And mm -hmm. then I think maybe in efforts to give her more one-on-one -on -one time, maybe um, they actually pulled her out and placed her in a separate classroom by herself with a buddy. Um, so the buddy part was great. That was spot mm -hmm. on, but um, <laughs> it should have been a situation in which the buddy stayed with her in the classroom of typically developing peers. Um, so she could have that community. Um, and it was just, that was really sad. That was, that was hard for me as her sister. Um, Cause I think that was the first time that I had really been aware of that um, kind of thing even being possible. Um, and yeah. And then at the same time, you know, I know it's gotta be difficult for people in those positions to make a call. Um, but I would say just, yeah, talking with the parents and having a meeting, just sitting down, going over some expectations and goals. Um, but yeah, I would say that like my biggest struggle with watching the stigma or the, yeah, the stigma um, was probably with, with children, other children. Um, so, you know, this doesn't happen anymore, but yeah. it, one day just, uh, I saw, I saw this kid that lived down the street from us, like walk up the street and come talk to Evangeline who was standing in the driveway. We had just gotten home from something and he basically tried to ask her a trick question. Um, he was like, Evangeline, can you answer like, uh, he said, what color is a brown bear? And <laughs> she was like eight at the time. And okay. she said, I don't, I don't know, uh, red. And he was like, no, it's not. <laughs> Clearly, I'm still like, oh, I still hold on to this. And I try not to. But he's like, no, it's brown because it's a brown bear. Like, that's the whole point. <laughs> and I just like my big sister this protective nature bubbled up and I was like, that's not very nice. Um, <laughs> and, I her, and just in the context, knowing, you know, this, <laughs> this kid. Um, and I, you know, at the same time, I like try to cut them some slack and understand that they're just children. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I would say it's definitely comments and stares from kids that like really hurt me the most as I was growing up with her. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've had somebody roll down the window and shout at her while she was playing in our neighborhood. And it was just, it was a kid in the car with his mom. Um, and oh, I wow. just, yeah, wanting so badly to just go tell him off. But Thank I know that. You. <laughs> oh, I'm so upset. I like uh, get like emotional thinking about it, but like it really is just education and like sitting down and talking to our children about like what it means to be different and that it's good. It's a good thing. So yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's so, about it. Well, we're fortunate. Yeah. Did Did she have any challenges growing up? Um, so she had heart surgery when she was a baby, when she was one. Um, but aside from that, she has not had any challenges, um, yeah, related to Down syndrome. Um, you know, she's been in, in and out of different schools just based on where they think is the best fit for her academically. Um, and I think that's been challenging. But a lot of people with disabilities 
and people affected by the disability community or people who are part of this community, um, they will say that I, the main difficulty is not the disability itself, but how they are treated by other people, which is just crazy. Um, crazy. Because again, to me, I, I don't see her disability and I like, I can't even physically see her down syndrome when I look at her. Um, I just see my sister and I've realized that like, I know, I know it's really difficult to turn that off in our minds, like to turn I off know. disability lens and to see someone who's an amputee as just hmm. a typical person because they are. Um, yeah. And just to see this person as your aunt or your friend or your colleague first yeah. and foremost. So that's where you get. See, the person, person first, like you mean, yeah. you mean to say, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, and with them. Yeah, I mean, that's that's so that's so amazing. You see, I I, I really believe so much in educating our community, and I think um, the more you educate people, the more you see people that are, are not educated. So I think yeah. what remains constant for me is to continue to educate people because I know that um, we also don't want to see the disability; we just want to see the um, ability you know leverage the strength and i know sometimes it can be hard especially when we talk about the academics right yeah and you know it's something that we just don't want to like um you, we don't we don't want like it, it's just about saying it's like me saying we don't want to be defeated because they love to succeed you know so we want to look at their areas of interest and help them succeed yeah mm -hmm. yeah I mean, that's that's kind of like part of your journey, like trying to like advocate for the sister, advocate for persons with Down syndrome, and that's just a a, a tiny bit, of base, you know, of your of your journey. There's still so much that lies ahead of Evangel. She, I know she wants to much more. How are you helping to push her to achieve, you know? Mm, a dream and what 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 can that be what's the dream what, where, where do you see her in five years and how are you helping her to get there yeah um so i think for her her main goal is just continuing to work different jobs um so most recently i guess for example we were at one of our favorite restaurants <laughs> and she decides that she's not hungry she's just gonna go help the kitchen staff. <laughs> and, <I mean. laughs> and at, first, at first you're like, oh, I don't think they need help. But at this point, I I let her do it because I know that someone's going to see that and either they'll be touched by it or they might offer her a job. So sure enough, she goes and asks for a dish rag and starts cleaning the tables in the restaurant and oh my God. I know. And um at the end, like when we're about to leave, I go and I go and talk to the lady who is working the front desk. And I was like, mm -hmm. hey, um, Evangeline wants to ask you something if you have a minute. And she Evangeline says, Um, can I work here? <laughs> and oh my basically God. Oh Yeah, I just my God contact information and she's going to give us a call as soon as you know things pick back up following covid but this oh this is the crazy part the woman working behind the counter turned out to be the owner and she has a sister with down syndrome back in lebanon wow right. it's a wow. lebanese restaurant yeah so i was like well there you go um so yeah, she'll probably wind up working there at some point. Just watching tables or, you know, serving people their meals. Um, but yeah, um, instances like that where I can encourage her and say, yeah, go ask her if you want a job. I mean, that's open to you. Like everyone has the right to ask. Um, and yeah, so I think for her... Um, you know, she's working at an ice skating rink right now. 
and um, on and off with COVID, a smoothie cafe. Um, yeah, so just cleaning skates, wiping tables, serving smoothies, wiping tables there. Um, it's been a really good start for her. And um, I mean, a personal goal of mine with her is to encourage her artistic abilities. Um, so she in high school started working with ceramics. And so she's the only person in our family who's really worked in 3D before. Um, uh, so a little bit, a little bit, a bit of background uh, information. Um, so my mom and dad are both artists and my dad's a printmaker. My mom's a painter. Um, my wow. sister is a really wonderful painter and can draw really well. Um, I'm also an illustrator and artist. Um, so we're thinking like, how fun would it be if we encouraged Evangeline to find her medium? Um, so I want her to keep doing ceramics and I would love for her to open a shop someday. Um, so yeah, she's had people buy from her before. So it's only the beginning. Something she's made before. Do you have any sample to show? I do. You're gonna have to ignore my ugly couch, though. <laughs> it's from the eighties. Blown away! Oh wow! I'm yet to see. <laughs> okay. What was that? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> this was kind of an experiment, um, but it's a pretty big bowl that I keep some of my beauty supplies in. Um, but I think this is pretty impressive. This is a little pie box. <laughs> wow. I see that very well. Like this little piece fits on top. So, yeah. This is amazing. I know. I've, I've just been blown away. I have just been blown away. This is amazing. Does she, amazing. Are, you, are you hoping that someday this is what she's going to be selling in a shop or something? Yeah, I would love for her to do that. Um, right now, since she hasn't been, or since she graduated, actually, she doesn't have access to the firing kiln and the ceramic studio. So I think it's a matter of her connected with a, a potter in the area, probably or a ceramicist. So, yeah. I mean, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful story about Evangeline. And it's just because she's able to achieve this because she's got such a beautiful sister like you. This is amazing. And, you know, we need to be accepting even as families you know, it, 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 it's not like it's magic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot of work must, must go into this, you know? And yeah. this, this, like, this is what I call creating an enabling environment for them to thrive. Right? Yeah. Yes. I, mean, I, I don't need to ask you the next question because my next question says, was there ever a time you wish you didn't have a sister with Down syndrome? <laughs> Never. Never. Gosh. I mean, Never. I, I want to be sympathetic to all siblings affected by disability as well as Down syndrome. Um, you know, there is a spectrum and, you know, there are differences in, in behaviors and you know, health conditions associated with Down syndrome. Um, so I do feel like she has been very easy to get along with. And you know, sometimes she has temper tantrums and <laughs> she gets upset, like just kind of let her cool off for a bit. Um, just like, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, just such a big no. <laughs> um, I, she just she wouldn't be her herself um without it like i think because of this condition i think it is due in part to her having down syndrome that 
she is as bubbly and warm as she is. Um, so, yeah. No, I just like, I, if I could replicate a bunch of little evangelists, I would. Like, <laughs> oh man, I'd love to have two, two sisters with Down syndrome. Um, but I'm blessed enough with one. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I was just going to say that, you know, I, some siblings might answer yes to that question and that's okay. Um, I think, you know, I think some people feel maybe overlooked by their parents while their sibling with Down syndrome is requiring a lot of care. Um, and I just, I never, I've always been the middle child, so I'm used to divided attention and it's honestly never really bothered me. Um, but that's not to say that anyone should feel bad if, if they sometimes struggle with that diagnosis. Um, I just would encourage them to like look for the things that are unique and about their sibling and, you know, to remember the saying, remember the phrase, the lucky few, yeah. the few um, that a lot of people, I mean, there, there are people that actually envy those of us who have siblings or children with Down syndrome. Um, because I think there's been this shift where people are realizing like, hey, these are some of the coolest people in the global population. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know anyone who hasn't been really touched by someone with Down syndrome. Um, or I, I know some people rather. So yeah, it seems across the board to be a shared experience that most people are profoundly impacted by them. And I just think I'm so lucky. I just, yeah, I, it's crazy. I like feel the love for her that I feel like new mothers talk about the love for their children. <laughs> um, yeah. I just like, I could pop. <laughs> I could just burst. It's, yeah, it's an amazing thing. So, no. Never wish, wow. never wish for anything different. Mm -mm. Oh, I'm losing you for a bit. Uh oh. Are we good? Okay, yeah. I got you down, yeah. So, that is, I mean, that's so beautiful, right? Yeah, and thank you. Thank you for the work you're doing in your community. And it's kind of like, um, you know, it's helping us is helping us see you from, like from Nigeria. It's giving a lot of hope to parents. It's giving a lot of hope to siblings as well. Because what happens is um, families are not really able to cope, you know, in my own community and, you know, even the siblings. And so what we're doing now is raise awareness that persons with Down syndrome can lead life to the fullest if they get the right support they need. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You talk. You spoke. You, you said to me yesterday that you work with um families. Can you just share some of what you do with families? Um. Sorry, you cut out. Do you mean in my day job? Yeah. You talked about direct support or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Yeah, I mentioned I work part-time as a portrait and wedding photographer and artist, um, and also part-time as a direct support professional. When you say artist, can I coach you there? When you when you say artist, can you talk a little bit about that, apart from being a photographer? Yeah, um, so I basically work as an illustrator, an artist. Um, people will come to me for wedding invitation designs or to like illustrate a memory as a gift for someone. Um, but my goal is to design patterned clothing and textiles. Um, so I'm working on that right now. Um, patterned, patterned clothes and all kinds of things printed. So um, yeah, so that's, I've got pretty 
divided interest, but they do kind of intersect with visual, I guess. Um, but yeah, as far as my day job, um, I basically am a buddy to um, basically just, I mean, I can't really share any details about the individuals, but um, um, yeah, I just take one person a couple times a week um, to the library or to the park. Um, this person has a disability and no. basically the government provides a certain number of hours, sometimes 20 hours a week for paid wow. support staff. Um, wow. So that's an amazing thing. Um, so my sister actually has her own buddy, buddy, like a direct support professional that does what I do. Um, so she picks Evangeline up from her school and takes her to her job in her car, takes her to dinner, teaches her how to make spaghetti, um, wow. takes her to the park. So that is something in Nigeria, like if that doesn't exist already, you can ask for, um, and just, I mean, I know it's more complicated than that, but that is something that I think has made a big, big difference in the past few decades in the United States. Um, so wow, it's so amazing. Like my daughter, my daughter loves to dance, right? Well, I don't mm -hmm. have, I don't have time in the world to take her to dance rehearsals or take her for ballet. So what you're talking about now is if I, if she had um, like a support you know, like a direct support um, staff or something, that yeah. would just give me some respite, you know. Exactly, they're called respite hours too, so. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's awesome, I really love it. I would consult you for that, I mean, I will consult you more. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That, you know, that's a good one, right? Yeah. You know, but to check, you know, do the background check, you know, check for security mm -hmm. and all things, yeah. Yep. That's so amazing. Yeah. So what, what, um, like, yeah, I mean, you, you've done so well with, with your sister so far. I just want you to talk more about your project. Are you looking to come to Nigeria anytime? I would love to come to Nigeria <laughs> so much. Um, yeah, it's really just a matter of securing some funding. So, you know, I think at some point I will, consider doing a patreon account where people can um subscribe for like five dollars a month um and even that could help me travel more to north carolina um but yeah as soon as i can get a plane ticket 100 <laughs> percent. Mm -hmm. um but yeah basically parents just reach out to me through our website's contact form and they say hey i'm interested in participating i live in um, in Raleigh, North Carolina, or I live in the United Kingdom, um, or Japan. So obviously the ones in North Carolina, I'm able to get to first. Um, and then anyone who lives kind of far from me, I just add to a list of inquiries. Um, so anytime I'm in the UK, I can just go through this list of parents and contact them um obviously prior to being there and set up some interviews but um yeah so this is the same format that special books by special kids uses um mm -hmm. if you're familiar with that series also amazing but um yeah so sometimes i will actually reach out to the parents or the individuals themselves and say hey i see that you have a coffee shop and you have down syndrome could I interview you and take a couple pictures? Um, and it's usually under an hour and a half or two hours total. Um, and I just write down information and ask the parents some questions about their experience and compile it all in a post. Um, so right now I have like 10 participants kind of in the log that um, I'm kind of spacing out so that we have enough content consistently, but um, yeah, so the goal is to 
take this worldwide and yeah, just make this as representative as possible. So, this is wow. so, so much fun. You are so amazing. Well done. Thank you. I, I see you have so much going on. Like, <laughs> how do you manage your time? You know, and is there any time you feel that uh, Evan, Jerry, and your sister may not be safe in the community? Does she do stuff herself? Does she go to work by herself? You know, what are the things she's able to like achieve by herself? Or do you have fears that, you know, um, my sister may not be safe, you know, in the community? Um, so, oh, sorry, I think there's a lag. Um, yeah, so she she doesn't drive herself anywhere. She doesn't drive. Um, so she's pretty much just driven around by family or her worker. So she's always got someone with her. Um, okay. And the way that our cities are laid out, at least cities that aren't very big, I guess, um, you kind of have to drive everywhere. So there's nowhere that she would really be walking to. Um, now, when I was living in Germany, um, I was in a much larger city and I would see people with Down syndrome taking the bus by themselves, walking to their jobs by themselves. And to me, that was amazing because um, we don't walk anywhere <laughs> in Wilmington. Um, but um, I, I would worry about her safety. Honestly, yeah, a little bit more if she were alone um, more often. Um, thankfully, we haven't had any hate speech directed at us um, mm. other than when she was younger and that kid was on the window. Um, I forgive him. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I know I'm aware that it's different in other countries and even just other communities. Um, so, yeah, I know we're we're very blessed for that. Yeah, wow, that is so that is so beautiful. Like honestly, your story is really inspired me. It's it has inspired me to give like. You know, because um, raising my daughter, like, I care for the future sometimes. Uh, that's the truth. I care that, oh, I hope one day she'll be able to, like, do stuff herself. She'll be safe on the streets. She won't be abused, you know, or mistreated. And for the most part, in this part of Nigeria, we don't really get, they don't really get to work like that. They don't even, you know, organizations or small businesses don't even like to associate with them. So we're trying to see how we can change that because I realize that they love to do work. They love to, to help, you know, yeah. they love to care. They love to, um, they don't just want to be like ignored. They love no. to be noticed, right? Yeah. Are there, are there any other areas of interest? You've noticed, you know, Evangel Evangelion has like apart from poetry, apart from dancing, does she love to dance? She loves to dance. She has a karaoke oh. machine in her room. Um, she likes running. She's done gymnastics, uh, tennis. She's done basketball. Um, wow! But she loves her movies a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Does she love watching movies? You said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she loves watching movies. So, the Adventures of Narn, the Chronicles of Narnia. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> what else? <laughs> she loves The Greatest Showman. Um, she kind of rides these waves of what's popular. She loves Disney Channel, and this is again where there's a big spectrum. Like some people who are 20 with Down syndrome love children's movies some are just over it and they like scary movies or <laughs> sitcoms or what have you um so 
Yeah. She she had a big Nemo and Dora phase, but now she's into more teenager stuff like mermaids and H2O. Um so yeah. Do you, do you think it's okay for for her to love um like um um cartoons? Do you think it's still okay because of her age? Do you think it's age appropriate? Yeah, this is a difficult one. Um, mm -hmm. Determining like what is a matter of environment. Um, so, you know, she has some peers who are her same age and have cell phones and yeah, are a little bit more, um, maybe their speaking is more developed. Um, and then she, you know, she's got friends who are also close to 20 and you know they love kids cartoons and honestly i i've come to to realize it's just whatever makes them happy um yeah absolutely. i don't honestly have a good answer for that though because i think you know if we intentionally like only or if we only let her watch documentaries Maybe her tastes would change, um, but I think there's a reason we're interested in what we're interested in, and I think there's a certain extent to which you you wouldn't want to like force anyone yeah. to stop enjoying what they love within reason. <laughs> um, yeah, I hear you. I know. I feel you actually. Well, you can't really determine what, what we shouldn't kind of determine what 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 makes them what should make them happy. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I love the fact that you know she's active and she can speak for herself. Like I mean, she knows what she wants to do. She knows, you know, and that makes it kind of easier for us to understand, you know, a mood and everything about her. Mm -hmm. That is so. So what, what can you um, just share briefly about your next project? Uh, with your upcoming? Would you like to share about your upcoming project? Yes. Um, so upcoming, sorry, upcoming, upcoming interviews or? Projects, whatever it is you're doing with T21. Yeah. Do you have an upcoming project? I mean, do you have? Um, do, you, do you have projects like Christmas? You know, as Christmas is approaching, do you have projects? Okay, okay. Is there any project you're thinking about or are you thinking about collaborations or whatever? Sorry, there was a tiny bit of a lag. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I mean, I'm basically just keeping with the same momentum of just sharing stories um, as they come to me. Um, it's a little difficult with COVID, so you know mm -hmm. I'm trying to have my portrait sessions be like social distanced with masks, um, and understandably, a lot of parents are a little hesitant to do photo shoots right now. Um, oh. But yeah, I mean, it would be a dream to work with other uh, Down syndrome associations, just obviously all around the world. Um, but we've recently had an article published this morning, actually. Um, so we're doing that, like live interviews like this, um, article features, uh, that's been really exciting. But yeah, I think as far as people I'd love to collaborate with, um, there are a lot of advocates with Down syndrome, um, yeah. like Augie from The Lucky Few, Augie yeah. and Mason, I don't know if you know them. Um, I would love to interview the rest of the Born This Way cast. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that television television show. Um, um, it was on a &E and and it just featured like seven Down syndrome. Yeah, so, so we interviewed we, all of them already. What was that? Okay. The television show, I'm trying to remember there's one, Born This Way. Yeah, Born This Way, mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so sitting down with that cast would be awesome. Um, yeah. And if you look at our 
Instagram, you can see that one of the cast members came to North Carolina. We interviewed her. Um, oh. So just for a buddy walk. But yeah. Yeah, but maybe down the road to answer your question, a book. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Like, possibly video incorporated. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That's good. Good. Well, thank you everyone for watching. I'm about rounding up with my guest from North Carolina, Juliet First. She's been with me for the past hour and she shared a beautiful story about her sister Evangeline living with Down syndrome and a project, the D21 project. She's a photographer and artist and I see the beautiful stuff she's done. I mean, the, the beautiful work, the pottery work she's done, she's helped a sister to achieve. It's, it's something really, really I, I love, right? And that tells us that persons with Down syndrome have um, hidden talents. They have the ability to become whatever it is they want to become. Mm -hmm. And I believe in their dreams as well. And they need support from people like you and I. They need support from family. They need support from the community. They need support from um, everybody, uh, you know, because I believe so much that in this world, diversity is key. Without diversity, yes. there wouldn't be there wouldn't be one world, you know. Right. And um, mm -hmm. I want to say big, big thank you to you, Juliet. You've been thank an amazing you. guest. Yeah. I honestly yesterday, I mean, it was so beautiful seeing um, seeing um, Evangeline smile. Mm -hmm. you know, I, honestly, I wish that. I could just give her a hug. <laughs> no, she's so sweet. She's very affectionate. Yeah. She's so sweet. I know I can, you know, I, I remember the words she told me yesterday. And honestly, what I just see is I can wait for my daughter to grow, to grow. Like every time she says she wants to grow up, you know, because she's just nine. And this, this makes me, you know, um, keep pushing, gives me a lot of hope. And I want, you, I want to encourage everyone out there that, you know, Down syndrome is not the end of the world. It's not, it's not a death sentence. There are achievers. And that's why I really love to talk about, I would continue to talk about the series. I mean, to bring people to talk on the series, my child has Down syndrome, so freaking what? Like, seriously, it doesn't really, it doesn't really define them, you know. They're persons first, and that's what we're trying to like communicate to people. That's what we're trying to communicate to the whole world. And we need to celebrate um, our differences. You know, even if you look at me, I'm putting on glasses. You're not putting on glasses. It doesn't mean that I'm. You know, it doesn't mean anything. That's just how it is. Like, yeah, I have, blonde hair, I have black hair. It doesn't mean anything. And no. that is a message you're trying to pass across to people that. All we need to do with our kids with Down syndrome is just to support them, you know, um, treat them as human beings, you know, because um, in other African countries, I heard your story already. And I know that for the for the most part, in the 80s, they were institutionalized. And I know that in Nigeria or in other African countries, sometimes that they're being um, called um, snakes. They actually call them snakes. They're from they're from the river. That they're their spirits. And sometimes in other African countries, I've heard stories of how people put their child with Down syndrome under a tree, um, believing that if they go back there the next day, the gods should have taken their taken their child away because they're kind of trying to return them to the gods. And it's believed that the gods are angry at you for having a child with Down syndrome, if you have a child with Down syndrome, it means it's believed or perceived like, like the gods are angry, you know, at you or with you or whatever. And then I realized when, it, when I read about a woman's story, I realized that what happens to the children under the tree is that animals, strange animals just, you know, take them away or something like that, kill them. And so it's amazing. So what, what, why the story came on air was because a woman dropped a, a son under the tree somewhere in one of those African countries. And um, she, 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 you know, that's just what you should do. Like, I mean, that is the, the belief that you must return the child to the gods. And can you believe that the next day the child was still there? And that was how we, people were able to debunk, you know, 
that myth about, you know, having a child with Down syndrome and they belong to the gods and blah, 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 what have you. And so we need to continue wow. to speak out. We need to continue to talk about, you know, um, communities. I mean, talk, talk about people accepting them. We need to be the microphones, like I always say. And I mean, yeah. it's, it's okay to have Down syndrome. It's okay. It's so, amazing. Um, Down syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just reversing that perception that, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard <laughs> horrible stories, horrible, horrible stories. Yeah, there's there's work to be done for sure, even yeah. in the United States. So that's something to hopefully encourage people watching in Nigeria or anywhere that it's not perfect here either and that we're all in this fight. Um, to improve public perception and to provide more experiences and opportunities for people with Down syndrome. So we're all in this together and it's not perfect no matter where you go. So, yeah. yeah thank you for that. Thank you for sharing from your heart. Thank you yes. for the words. What, I mean, this words, you, 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 this is your last words for, uh, for um, persons in the Nigerian community, right, or wherever, wherever you are listening to us today, Juliet is saying it's not perfect, you know, even in the United States, it's not perfect. We need to keep working to make things better, to improve, improve the lives of persons with Down syndrome. Um, what do you think, what, what, what's your last advice for parents or for teachers? Um, I would just say to, again, like, notice those differences and kind of decide to change our minds about them and to view them as amazing things. Um, to, yeah, just like you said, to give them a microphone and see what's unique that they have to tell you or to share with your class. Um, you know, a lot of times, like, one strength of many people with Down syndrome is that, like I said, they're very warm and personable and affectionate. And um, just leaning into that and like nurturing the things, encouraging the things in them like that, that you notice. Um, so me and Evangeline, we do a lot of hugging and I like, I make sure she knows that I'm somebody that she can I get it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can express that part of herself with. Um, so, and just like any of our other friends, like what is something in you, Tola, that I can help bring out? You know, um, like what is something in my mom that I can encourage or my friends? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think like the lessons that we can learn from from people with Down syndrome can really apply to literally all of us. Um, yeah. And yeah, just to remember that it really is such a good thing and that, I don't know, I think, I personally think we are so lucky to have someone with Down syndrome so close to us. Um, uh, you know, I have friends that would love to hang out with my sister. Um, cool. And I just feel like, how awesome, like I get to be with her all the time. Um, oh. so it really is just such a good thing. It's not a bad thing at all. It makes you feel good, right? That makes you feel yeah. special. It makes yeah. you feel like you have something other people want kind of, right? For sure, yeah. <laughs> like, I really do feel so lucky. Yeah. yeah. What did I do to deserve this? Yeah. And that's not to wow. say it's not difficult sometimes, but it's so, so worth it. Yeah. I, I, I honestly, uh, honestly, I, I, I'm blessed as well. I, I really know what you're talking about. I got you right because, you know, some people look at you like, mm, how they just wonder how you coping, how you're dealing with it. You know? But Down syndrome is not a bad thing. Like you said, it's not a bad thing. Like, so we have come to the end of this series which is the seventh episode of My Child as Down Syndrome. So what? 
I want to say a big thank you to you, Juliet, for taking our time to join us for the past one hour on the show. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. Yeah. Me. Send my love and hugs to Evangeline. I will. She knew the world. The Mo. <laughs> yeah. She means the world to all of us, not just you. <laughs> she means the world to everybody. Yes. Thank you for letting me celebrate her. <laughs> Thank you so much for everything you're doing. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. if you're watching from the T21 community, check out the Mo Rainbow Down Syndrome Foundation. Um, it's linked on our page in a recent post. So go see what they're up to. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Have an awesome Bye. day. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. That was an amazing session with Juliet first from North Carolina in the United States of America. She told us beautiful stories about Evangelina's sister with Down syndrome and how she's been able to like um, help her, you know, become the woman she is. Evangelina is a 20 year old um, lady, beautiful lady with Down syndrome and she's, you know, been involved so much, can have so much um, different types of activities like basketball. She loves sports, you know. She loves to dance, she loves music, she loves to go to the movies. And most importantly, she loves poetry. And poetry is made from clay, and I think she's got some like, um, type of, um, what's it called, now? specialized ways of, you know, making something beautiful out of clay. So keep an eye on the T21 projects. Thank you very much. And join us next Sunday when I invite my guest, a mother with a child at Down syndrome. Bye. My name is TM for Nigeria. Nigeria. Thank you.